late and live with me from the Bay State, Massachusetts, and apparently using David Letterman's old microphone in front of him. Brad, good to see you. Hey, thanks for having me on. Uh, so let's get to the serious stuff. I know you've been watching this unfold, and, mm -hmm. and uh, give me your takeaway on what you've seen so far and, and what we saw play out today here in D.C. Yeah, absolutely. So what we saw in D.C. today was absolutely raucous from the left. We saw 70 people arrested for disrupting the nomination today, and it's hard to see what for because judge uh, judge Kavanaugh is extremely well qualified you know he's a Yale law graduate who received the highest possible qualif uh, qualification from the American Bar Association and he is a top tier conservative jurist who would have been appointed by any Republican president so it's hard to see what all the um, outrage is about well and, and as we talked with Marge a few moments ago a lot of people have said well regardless of who uh, who the president put up, you would see a good amount of pushback, but we should also acknowledge the fact that uh, uh, Mitch McConnell and many other, and Orrin Hatch has said, you know, the Democrats owe deference to this nominee because of his qualifications. Democrats are going to say, well, what about Merrick Garland? Well, you know, I think they have a point, and I think that Merrick Garland was treated unfairly, but that seat has been filled, mm -hmm. um, and we need to move on. Uh, that was that seat was filled by Justice Gorsuch, and we need we need to move on from that hyperpartisan atmosphere and start evaluating judges based on their qualifications and whether they are within the mainstream of legal jurisprudence, which in both cases Judge Kavanaugh absolutely is. You know, he would be a stalwart defender of the First Amendment rights, free speech, free press, free religion, Second Amendment rights, and all. Also, um, it, he would be a constitutionalist conservative justice within the mainstream. So it's time we get we put politics aside and nominate qualified justices who are appointed by legitimate presidents. Well, we were talking about this uh, in, in the newsroom, and I think regardless of, of, of who President Trump would have put up, and we know that there was a, that the Federal Society was a part of a group that put together mm -hmm. a list of, of people that they found would be suitable nominees, uh, I find it hard to believe that there's anybody that would be put up that would not face resistance from from the Democrats and from the left. Yeah, you know, President Trump could have nominated a moderate Democrat and the left would have been outraged. You know, they sent out fundraising. Senator Cory Booker today, a 2020, a 2020 hopeful, sent out a fundraising email during the actual um, hearing that went on. So it's clear that this really isn't about Judge Kavanaugh. I think we all can expect that he's likely to go through. Um, the outrage and the vitriol is really just, in my opinion, virtue signaling to set the Democrats up for 2018. So as this goes forward, as this process unfolds, um, what do you, I mean, do, do you think that we're still going to see a good amount of pushback from the left or was this just day one, let's get it out of our systems and let the process unfold? Well, I think it's only going to get worse from here, to be honest, because we've seen this hashtag resist mentality, which sometimes is appropriate. You know, the president has done things that I think we all or most people can agree are wrong. But uh, it is sad to see it, it, it taking over basic nomination processes. You know, I'm not, but you're old enough to remember when oh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg... Geez, thanks. The, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was nominated. Uh, she she passed the Senate right. almost unanimously. Which, and so which, we need to go back to those times. You're absolutely right. And you, but you know, and it's kind of funny to see how times have changed. But I think it changes on both sides when you look at yeah. the entire process. Before I let you go, the one thing that people brought up Roe versus Wade. Uh, you know, from, from from what you think, from your observations, does Roe versus Wade stand a chance of lasting uh, a year after Brett Kavanaugh if he gets on the court? Yeah, absolutely. I think actually Roe v. Wade, if you look at the legal situation in depth, is unlikely to be overturned, as is the follow-up case, Planned Parenthood versus Casey. It's very unlikely that that will actually be overturned. We may see some chipped, ch chipped away at some, but all that would ever do is return decisions about abortions, uh, abortion laws to the states, to the state level, right? So t California could have more liberal laws and Texas could have more restrictive laws. And, you know, that is how de uh, federalist democracy is supposed to work. Brad Palumbo, Young Voices, always good to see you.